Next, let's get on to the main um, meat and potatoes of the few, last few days, isn't it? It's been absolutely going off when it, in terms of uh, Brendan Schaub and Brian Callan, or mostly Brian Callan and his accusations or the allegations against him um, concerning some past encounters he had with the ladies. Um, one specifically, of course, from rape from back in the day, I think, what was it, in the 90s or something, right? He was accused of rape or allegedly accused of rape by this lady that finally came out and basically he spoke a piece via the LA Times and so far it feels like um it feels like the vitriol against Callan has sort of died down which is good to see right because you know he does need his day in court I think cancelling somebody based off allegations is completely not on I think everyone deserves that moment to defend themselves uh the right and proper way and if they're innocent then let them go about you know living their life doing their thing so we have an update on this story via Brendan Schaub and the Los Angeles Times, I guess he recently went on his podcast, which he decided to do off the back of these allegations because there were some rumors going around. That, oh, he might not do the show because Brian Callan's been accused of this and that. And you know, it's the fire and the kid. It's those two. They're not going to do it. But I always assumed Brian would, Brendan would do the show. I think with, with, with the pandemic happening um with the lack of rev with the lack of being able to make money on the road as a comedian which is his real bread and butter day to day i'd assume um it would make sense that he would try his best to protect his main cash cow or his main source of creative expression all that will lock you maybe and keep the show going and i think because the last two couple of the last few shows i've watched Mike Catherwood was a host and I don't know who the other one was the other time but they've been all right you know he can still do the show with a guest co-host it does work obviously it's more obviously it's better with Callan they're done their kind of chemistry works better but you know sometimes a bit of a break can be good to refresh the relationship refresh the chemistry because it was getting a bit dull I think a lot of fans did kind of feel they were sort of like running out of things to say they were going through some personal moments it felt like on camera you kind of feel that like they had a few bad days but I think the guest show things usually work pretty well and to be honest as well which is a weird thing to say i think it actually brings out the best in Bra brendan right he can be a bit annoying especially since covid and the pandemic he's just you know he's become intolerable sometimes but i think the best he the best of him comes out when he has a guest that doesn't really he doesn't speak to all the time he lets them speak they have a bit of banter he take a piss out of himself it feels a bit more organic so anyway brendan callan got on um to find the kid as the los angeles times here says brian callan's podcast co-host brendan Shaw, defense comedian and made allegations so we're going to go through exactly what he said and kind of i'll offer my opinion as we go along <clears throat> so it says the following by Amy Kaufman, of course. It says the following it says, um, the co host of Brian Callan's podcast is standing by the comedian as he faces sexual assault, um, sexual misconduct allegations. Sorry, Brendan Shaw, a former UFC heavyweight who is Callan's other half on the Fire and the Kid podcast, said in a new episode on Monday that obviously I stick by the man that he called his partner in crime. <laughs> <coughs> That's probably a bad phrase to use. Right, considering the crime that's being alleged, but hey. He said, but Shaw did not comment specifically on the accusations Callan is facing, saying that he would let his friend speak for himself. Which is fair, isn't it? I think this goes to show that I think some people were um you know, pontificating that oh Shaw didn't let him do the show because he wants to protect this and that, but it seems like they're still in contact and they're sort of trying to sort it out between each other. And it seems like for the most part, most of his friends are backing him up, which is nice to see, isn't it? You know, LA comedians and LA Hollywood types can be fucking annoying with how plastic and, you know, flip floppy they are with their friendships, but it's good to see, you know, that there's there's still some uh, loyalty in some places. It continues, it says um, he said, Khan has asked me not to go hard in the paint for him on the show because apparently if I say what I want to say, it's going to get Khan in more trouble and bring more attention to Khan. So my hands are a little bit tired. I think that's true. I think that's fair to say. He said that Shed Shaw, who pivoted to stand up comedy after his UFC career, he says, which is very tough for me, very, very tough for me because I think you guys know how much I love Brian and obviously I stick by Brian Callan that's a fair statement and i'd like that he's backing up his friend again i think that's nice to see it's actually interesting that this is a far better response already than how they responded to the crystal Lear accusations when again not comparing you know nasty allegation with nasty allegation but if you have to be if you have to be honest on paper what's the worst allegation being accused of rape and essentially and maybe three other cases of sexual misconduct which sort of marry up to your personality and the stories that you've said on the podcast right allegedly 
or being accused of being a pedo. And then when you look into the story, it's him messaging a girl when she's 18 or 16 and then messaging her back when she's, you know, of age. Weird and creepo stuff, but not exactly pedophilia or grooming, right? But they went hard in the... They, it looks like he's going hard to pay with Callan. More so did with Delia. Maybe as a, because they learned their lesson with how they dealt with the Delia stuff. I don't know. Or maybe because generally they think Delia is actually in the wrong and there's more news to come out. Who knows? But it's interesting to see that they've dealt with this far better than they did with the Delia stuff. Next one. It says, uh, Shorb's statement came a day after Callan took to Instagram to defend himself against... Uh, claims from four women who told the Times that they had been sexually mistreated by the 53 year old. Like I put his age there, that's ouch. Um, in his Instagram video, the Goldbergs actor again denied all allegations, which include rape, sexual harassment, and disturbing comments. When they put them in words like that, it just makes you sound like a monster. And it's like, God damn. So um, he vowed not to post a statement and disappear, but then said he was obviously taking a leave of absence from the fire and the kid, which I think in retrospect is a good thing. I think when you're dealing with something like this, trying to get on a podcast and make jokes and you know quint you know their, their famous quote trying to get in a podcast and make dick jokes doesn't make any sense and more likely than not especially oh what shub said earlier about him telling me hey don't talk about my 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 thing on the podcast makes sense as well because if you know anything about show sure you know he's you know he's loose lips mcgee in it right if you you can't tell the two people in la you can't tell secrets uh what no three people bobby lee uh burt kreischer and brendan shaw right they will definitely free under the bus sometimes inadvertently right just because they get excited and they just reveal stuff and then suddenly you know you're having to defend yourself from allegations or supposedly cheating on your wife when you're on the road you don't want that um and continue says on monday's episode Shaw persisted that it was callan's decision to um momentarily distance himself for the podcast noting that he was also in the midst of recovering from covid19 and an idly to lip surgery <laughs> <laughs> he said i've never seen him like this brian's exhausted mentally and physically said sure but i hope brian figures it out and i think he will in due time brian will be back it's funny though isn't it like how life comes at you and it just again it's not funny in terms of him i'm sure he's going through stuff and again praise up for the guy and hopefully he bounces back and he's able to prove his allegations are false but it's just interesting how life hits you right it's never one hit it's always in freeze in bunches right pandemic comes along and essentially eviscerates eviscerates the entire LA, la comedy scene's income on the road especially then off the back of that you know allegations um center around one of the you know mainstays of that la scene in crystalia right someone very popular somebody who everybody used for views to get on their podcast a funny dude in general right that rocks the industry people start thinking whoa if he's getting in trouble imagine me and then suddenly they come for you whilst, you know, especially off the back of them crying on their podcast. It's just, wow. And especially off the back of the eyelid lift surgery. That was, what, an attempt to secure more roles. And now the industry is essentially, what, kaput. Hollywood doesn't exist anymore, really, right? They're operating these satellite studios all over America. I've heard about Tyler Perry doing something, right? It's just, oh, yeah, it's just mad, isn't it? And again, this, you know... Uh, and the COVID stuff is always funny considering how, you know, reckless they were in terms of how they dealt with it when they went on the road. It's just, it's kind of like, um, if you believed in karma, you would say this is some sort of karma. Again, I'm not that one that's person to say that because, again, you know, we don't know anything about people's lives. But if you were a believer in karma, you would say this is some sort of karmic retribution because it just seems weird, isn't it? It just came completely out of left field. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's continuous says, um, after the time publishes article about Callan's ledger behavior Friday he posted a message to his fans on Twitter noting he would record a podcast addressing the situation on Saturday the podcast never materialized but Shorb said he, he had every intention of defending Callan during the world beating during the would be recording until Callan suggested that that was not a sound decision again they've dealt with this so much better than they did with the crystalia situation i wonder what happened An amazing foresight from callum well done because that episode again i'm saying i said it already before on here they should have you know i think he was just in the emotional and probably you know just really desperate to defend himself i understand that but getting on a podcast rambling for you know and in you know x amount of time on a very touchy subject um isn't the right thing to do especially in the midst of what happened i think if this would have happened pre Delia, it would have been okay maybe it would have been okay i don't know yeah maybe it would have been okay because because Delia is so famous and because he played that pedophile on that program you right it just i don't know because of the the screenshots as well really hurt him because i think a lot of this Callan's 
it feels like the Callan hate hasn't been as hard as it was with Dalia because I think the screenshots, the, the the visual element of it really helped, right? The fact that these girls did look quite young and they had actual screenshots with his actual text, right? With his email address verified on there it, and with the pattern and how he spoke, I think that really hurt him because it was more visual than this Callan thing, which, you know, something happened in the 90s, something happened with some of, you know, it doesn't necessarily read the same way. I don't know why, again, maybe it's an age thing, who knows, which is odd really, isn't it, in that regard. Um, it continues, it says, um, I was, this is kind of, this is short talking, it said, I was like, I'm going to be your flavor flab, short record. And he goes, yeah, but dude, it was 21 years ago. If I do that podcast, you're going to sit there and nod your head. You're going to look stupid. Let me handle this. This isn't your fight. This is my thing. I'm going to, I'm not going to drag you into this, which is, good to see him and i think you know again i we like to or i like to rag on the fact that la people aren't really friends and they just use each other for clout but it's good to see that they have surely have a brotherhood between each other because it seems like callan was saying in between words hey go look after our main nest egg you know our main source of income at the moment let's not mess that up with my dumb allegations or with my in this you know um indecent behavior um, and let me just defend this on my own which is good and he, and he sort of put some distance on it so much so I think that even I think the podcast episode bio has changed now and it says co-host it says Brendan Shaw and then um, would co-host every week so they're um, I, it seems like they're actively taking steps to sort of distance themselves from Kellen at his request it seems like which is fair I think if, if it was just Shaw doing it then of course you'd be like he's a shitty friend but I don't think it's him I think it's you know the I think it's Callan actually suggested it, which is actually a good thing to see. And then the end here says, um, Shorb said he was having a difficulty, however, following Callan's request because not shooting from the hip and saying what's on my mind is against everything I know. He says, uh, it's hard for me to not to release the hounds and give you my true thoughts. I can't say anything that's going to satisfy anyone who wants me to give you my hot take. Anything I say is only going to hurt Brian. And that's the last thing I want to do, which is sound in it, sound um, interpretation. But he knows that for sure, man. And like if there's one person you don't want to defend you in public with this sensitive issue it would be brendan Schaub. he just you know he's definitely going to put his foot in it he's going to say something in, in, incredibly misogynistic it's going to come across very insensitive um he's going to make some broad sweeping statements and more likely than not especially if you listen to these podcasts and you read between the lines it feels as if they have more people in mind that they're trying to aim their guns at it doesn't feel like it's just going to end at um Brendan, I mean, uh, sorry, uh, Brian Callan. It feels like other people are going to get um, handed out too. And it made me think about Whitney Cummings, right? It made me think, wow, I'm surprised they haven't gone at Whitney, in it. Like, cause Whitney's been a bit of a terrible friend, right? Horrendous in this whole issue, especially if you believe the the story about her and Crystal Lear, where supposedly um, she, I think I've listened to it on another podcast, where supposedly she offered, um, she kind of offered the Lear a lawyer that she's used, pre I don't know, or someone's used previously. That's a really good one to deal with this issue that he's got concerning the allegation he has about grooming and then as soon as she offered him that she just ghosted him completely didn't pick up his calls anymore and then of course deleted his episode on her podcast and denounced him in public and you know made these weird vague statements about her how she's feeling you know i don't know she made some strange comments it just didn't feel like she was kind of backing up her friend right um, and then of course the Callan things come out and of course it's only been a couple of days and she doesn't need to you know I, I don't you don't need to reply to anything but it's just interesting to see how she threw Chris under the bus and no one said anything but then in the same token I'm also of the opinion because an, an article actually came out here from what what's this paper called Paj Pajabi Pajabia Pajabia or something right this place called Pajabia I'll put it in the screen let's get rid of that has this article now and they're trying to go after Whitney now which I think is completely unfair I'm not really down for it at all again I, I said in the beginning I don't think she's a great friend um she obviously threw Chris under the bus but I think trying to because this is an article from Pajiba it says every social media post Whitney Cummings has made since Brian Callan's rape allegation came out like who cares what does she have to do with it it's not her responsibility how her friends um how her male friends especially what they get up to we know when they're not in her company she is not responsible for their actions and it's just bizarre especially if in this me too era to have it feels like is it yeah see if it's so bizarre to have another woman right going after another woman who happens to be friends with somebody who might have done something indecent like doesn't make any sense like what what does she have to do with it does she have to come out and what completely eviscerate him in public and then make herself look bad in front of all her comedian friends because they didn't because again if you're one of her friends 
and you see how she goes hard in the paint against Chris or she completely disowns Callan, you're not going to be you're not going to be too comfortable being around her, right? Because you don't know what she might do is if you get in trouble. So she's stuck between a rock and a hard place. But I just think, again, there's there's enough there's enough um, creeps and monsters out there for the media to be really directing their attention to. Right. Um, there's an ongoing issues at the moment now with the Origis in China. Right. That are being essentially what um, they're essentially being exterminated. Right. From the population because they don't marry up with the authoritarian rule over there they can't practice their religion uh freely it feels like for the sake of it right but concentrate on something like that that's a that's a good story to go on don't be handing out Whitney Cummings because she didn't reply the way you wanted her to reply it's uh, it's not on I'm not really down for it man but yeah that's the update I guess concerning um Shaw and the Fire and the Kid and Brian Cannon um let's see what happens again I think we can't make any sweeping assessments on it now I still think there is a um, everyone deserves a day in court and it makes me think also actually imagine if these story imagine if the stories get proven to be false what then happens with the accusers do we how do we punish them like what or how, how do we how do they get punished is there some sort of con there should be a consequence um behind that like you can't just go around accusing somebody falsely and just you know go about your life swimmingly there should be something that happens but we just don't know how we deal with in society nowadays we, we probably don't even deal with accusations that well in the first place not so much so for false ones but it, uh, we probably need to return to a place it's not gonna may, it might not happen i assume but it would be nice to return to a place where we restore the severity in phrases and words right like racism and rape and stuff like they, they need to they need to still they don't have that weight that they used to have because people ban them around and throw them around willy-nilly right any sort of like regrettable sexual experience now is being classified as rape any kind of slight in what in um corporate america is somehow um assigned to racism we need to get to a place where we sort of assign those labels to situations when they merit so that we can deal with them accordingly and it'll just throw them around so they lose their relevance or they lose their potency or they lose their severity because at the moment that's what it sort of feels like right because he could let's say for real he could legitly be a creep right brian Callan could legitly be somebody who kind of always oversteps the mark um doesn't read signs well um is the king of making people uncomfortable whatever it may be allegedly right he could legitimately be that guy but then that's not enough to kind of tar him with that brush so you throw all these other things at him to kind of bring him down it's like no you don't need to do that just focus on the thing that he actually did and, and not all the other superfluous stuff that you want to um, bury him with because he was a dick to you back in the day and again that's only if it's false if it's true of course you know um, do what you have to do but if it's false we really need to kind of reconsider how we go about um, dealing with these things in public I would say that's my opinion anyway, on that one